for hitting the live button. Live button's been yes. pressed. We've been live for 30 seconds already, because that's the weird thing we haven't figured out yet. With oh, YouTube timing. So live the whole time. Hi, everybody. Hi, <laughs> You, 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 you uh, did it again. I don't have like my YouTube open or anything. I can't see anybody. I can't hear anybody. I'm it's, a it's, blind, naked mole rat down in a hole, feeling my, my way around. I'm impressed naked by that, to be honest. Mole rat. Mole rat. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Living soil society. Living the soil. So soil. So, I keep doing that. You do I'm all the time. It's fantastic. Living Cornelius, soil. help me. Give me strength. First off, I'd like to give a special thank you to our sponsors at Green Rush Nutrients. Stick it in your garden hole. That's all. I totally didn't wear any Green Rush gear because today I'm... But it's in tech. Meet the growers back. So Yeah, if you guys are not familiar with Photosyntech, I imagine everybody is, but if you're not, go check out his solo channel. He's got some really interesting information on medicinal growing uh, and a huge community and a huge following. He's kind of a big deal. Yeah. I know a thing or two about a thing or two. That's about it. But it's good times. About three or four things. Yeah. And rumor has it there might be a little bit more Tim on the Photosyntech channel. So in the near stay future. tuned for that. Yeah. A couple a, a little bit of TNT with TNT. T oh, blowing shit up, buddy. <gasps> I swear. Mm. My virgin ears. Okay, so exciting show tonight. We're gonna do yes, our dude. first live As demo. Always. And when do we not have an exciting show, man? This is true. We're we're yeah. good times all the time. Yeah. 100 percent 100 percent of the time. We are good times. I've got a camera set up here, and you can see it's pointing in a funny location, which is the down. Because if you can tell, I've, I've changed things up here with the, the grow tent. I've, I've done a reorg, and I've got a ton of space. You guys kind of catch that here in a few. But uh, what we're going to do tonight, we're going to build some sips. And then Tim's going to talk about some cool compost stuff. But first, we're going to get into some garden updates. Indeed we are. Yes. Indeed we are. Let's, uh, let's open up some updates. Why don't, why don't we start off uh, with you? Or do you want to start off with me? Or uh, I think, oh, it's me. It's me this time. You okay? I'm I'm gonna you. show me mine and you show me yours. Walk us walk us through. Just, Matt gonna... promised not to have a dozen photos, so like it's gonna be team spanking if he does. Oh, uh, I just like my pictures. I thought I like my pictures. I like my garden. I like looking at my garden. I like it's a nice these place. Times. Strawberry. Right. Strawberry. Strawberry. It's a little I'm, shaking I'm on the late, bottom, but I'm having some late strawberries right now too. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I love about the time of year is spring and fall. We always get strawberries and the, the ladies were producing this year. Not very big, but just so much flavor. I, I don't buy store about strawberries. They've been room for me. So I'm, I'm going to be blunt and honest. The strawberries that I grew, these Russian uh, climbing variety strawberries are the least flavorful strawberries I've ever had. No kidding. eh? Like worse than the store bought ones. No, <laughs> no worse than <laughs> store bought ones. But for, okay, okay, it's I have okay. So they're the least flavorful that I've grown. There you go, white Russian strawberries. Don't get that. Uh, these are the uh, I can't even remember. They've been sitting there for like eight or nine years. I've had the strawberry batch, and it just keeps on producing. I'm in yeah. love. I'm in love with these, man. These are the teddy bear sunflowers. They've just started popping this late in the season. Next year, when I grow them, I'm gonna have to start them indoors. But they are so cool, man. It's They're... it reminds me of going into hyperspeed, you know. Very cute. Good. There we go. You know, that could have taken a better picture and not so much focused on the loose. But hey, yeah, we're, we're not we're so gardeners, I, not photographers. I was gonna ask actually, are is there some little patches of powdery mildew on the sunflower leaf that I'm catching in the back, or is that just an uh, odd? Just just the odd angle. But you know, yeah. you bring up a real good point. I've been cleaning out powdery mildew the last couple of days in the garden and stuff. Uh, it's just, we're that late in the season. We've had yep. pretty decent weather, but cold at night and powdery mildew loves the cold. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. So now the pumpkin, I, I realized when I took this picture, I was looking at it like, okay, because I've got my arm in there, it doesn't quite work out until I zoom in. And then it's like, look at the size of this thing. I, I'm easily over 50 pounds. I'm going to say well, close I mean, to I made you. I made you pick it up the other day. So, yeah. Yep. So that's, uh, it's heavy, man. 
So cool you can one. see it's starting to ripen, turn orange. And I'm thinking we're going to do a pumpkin ferment. I'm thinking. Thinking, thinking. But yeah. any other suggestions out there, let me know. I um, like a, I like a nice pumpkin soup myself, but maybe a ferment would be a good, cool well, idea. Uh, the unfortunate thing with the pumpkins when they're this big, they're, they're too watery. They're not very fleshy. So this isn't good eating pumpkin. Thank you. Good girl. And finally, um, the fourth picture. This is a uh, sideways picture of a uh, cabbage flea beetle. Yeah. They've absolutely infested my yard everywhere. I noticed them today, like just little black dots everywhere. And they bounce, they bounce at you. So in and out of the house, coming out of the house, I'm, I'm shaking off, being real careful. I'm doing my best not to carry anything in with me because these guys like eating the green leafies. And yeah, so, well, as you can see, the, green leafies, the yeah. type of bugs, Matt, that, that actually get cleared up by flocks of those little chickadee birds. So when you see all those little birds come down, that's what they're eating is they're picking up all these little beetles and, and, and the like, uh, I would be, I, what I would recommend take a couple of days and ensure that cheddar doesn't hang out in the backyard for a couple of days because he's probably scaring the birds off that would normally land and pick these things off and, and decimate the population. Right. Uh, or uh, hire people. the chickens hire the chickens you were talking we, about earlier so yeah absolutely unfortunately these guys are up everywhere so, uh, a couple of days it's going to be cold here like we've got frost coming so it's it's imminent probably in the next week so oh those are good eating matthew you put those in a bowl right. serrate them up a little bit and then just eat it Crunchy. like punchy and tim yeah where are my testicles summer where are they <laughs> Uh, so I figured I would show you guys, I'm, I've, I've really been going whole hog as far as preparing the indoor space and, and, uh, re outdoor plants to indoors. So we're on week two for the majority of them now that have been brought inside. Uh, no signs, knock on wood, no signs of pests yet. Uh, however, I did a dispersal of over 10,000 mites, so 5,000 ground mites, 5,000 leaf mites, um, and uh, it's, it's looking golden. So this spot is actually right behind me here. You can see the stand kind of standing up there. So that spot uh, is brand new. So I, I, it was previously, you can see a cat bowl down at the bottom of the, of the, uh, of the picture there uh, that was basically a long table that the cats used for chow uh but they exclusively use the dining room table now so this is kind of dead wasted space that i'm gonna now take advantage of and as you can see wrapped uh nice uh philodendron up uh as well as the pothos i already had going and all sorts of other goodies Glorious. that big spider plant is the one i got on top of the mountain in banff with you nice nice looking great man looking great Next shot, the window shot. Yeah, so right there, that's going to be facing the shot we were just looking at. Uh, it's really filled out to the maximum now. I just brought in the goldfish plant, so it's the last of the really big plants that's still outside other than my inch plant, which I still have to find space for. <laughs> there we go. Looking great. And... Last but not least, the succulent station, the kitchen. I show this often, but it's uh, it's it's probably the most colorful and and unique spot. I don't know, but for me, I love succulents. Um, it's it's packed to the gills as well, so we can barely do laundry. <laughs> Just barely. Well, you know, you got to have plants, right? I mean, that's the important thing. Yeah, yeah. And I got some new cuttings this week as well. I went and. Uh, did a consultation for a community member here where I live uh, who had reached out on Facebook looking for help with plants. And uh, I got some cuttings of a, a rare uh, Filipino lemon tree. It's like little mini lemons. No, so that's cool. That's super I can cool, to get those rooted. Yeah. Got wee lemons, the tiny lemons. Mm. All right. Tiny yeah, lemons. Uh, well, that's our updates for this week, folks. Um, I think I think we're gonna maybe look at doing uh, like a community garden update pick here soon. Yep. Uh, you know, sharing share something from the community. We're gonna get into a little bit more of that later. But now, now it's time to build a sip. So I'm gonna 
I'm going to get up and we're going to do some stuff here. I'm going to move my chair out of the way. Um, this is going to so, be interesting. So, like, so, like on the cooking, Joe. Yeah, before before Matt goes in because he's excited uh, to the tits right now. He called me like an excited little girl a couple of hours ago, saying, "Oh my God, it's amazing! It's the best thing I've ever done in my life." Other than his children, of course. So uh, he, he, he's too excited. So sips is our are, are sub irrigated planters. Uh, some people know them as like auto watering pots, uh, but. Basically, what it is, is it's a soil reservoir on top of a water reservoir that wicks using the soil itself. So generally, you'll have like a stump of soil that goes down into the reservoir and actually wicks that water up into the soil and maintains kind of a, a perfect, beautifully moist uh, uh, moisture level, if you will. So what Matt's got here is he's got two five-gallon buckets sandwiched into each other effectively and yeah. i mean that's that's the thing that's where this is super easy. so he's got his two reservoirs there bottom one yep. is going to fill up with water top one is filled up with soil this and one's just as, got a bunch of holes and effectively yeah. it fits down in here <laughs> just like so cube goes in there little pot goes in here like that and i mean it's just that easy so I'm going to show you guys real quick how to do this. Now, the nice thing about this build is it doesn't really require anything for tools other than a knife and a drill with a decent sized bit. You know, it, it, you don't want to go too tiny because then you're potentially going to be drilling a lot of holes. Um, never spare use fingers, a knife. Spare you, could, you could also use a couple of spare fingers that you don't mind losing, right? This is true. This is true. So and to that point, a, maybe a little safety advertisement uh, as well before we start. <laughs> Well, I'm just going to say never use a knife sharper than you are. Um, that's that's the best way to approach the scenario. But um, when I'm using this knife, guys, um, any, any sort of uh, razor knife, be super careful. Like when I'm using this thing, I'm, I'm bringing it out about that much, right? And I'm going to show you how to stay safe when you're doing the cutting. So the first part of this build is actually pretty simple. Um, oh, and the last thing you need is uh, you can use a hole saw. Uh, this is a one-inch hole saw, or you can buy like a one-inch spade bit. But the, the, the trick to it here is a PVC pipe like this. It's one inch on the inner diameter. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about one and a quarter on the outer. So you want to make sure that you get something that's actually going to fit. Go to the hardware store, say, look, I need something that's going to drill a one inch piece of PVC pipe. Because when you're going to get your PVC pipe, you're going to be there anyway, right? So uh, the total cost for the, the build, um, you have to buy a length of PVC pipe. They're about... 10 or 12 feet long and depending on where you are they're $10 12 $15 I haven't looked at PVC in a while I had this stuff sitting in the garage but this is one inch PVC I wouldn't recommend going any smaller than that because it's difficult to water into okay? yeah I agree you're going to need a net pot okay this is uh this guy's about oh I think this is a two and a half maybe a three inch you can go a little bit bigger um it, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, this, this one doesn't quite reach down to the bottom of the uh, bucket. But again, that's not a huge deal either because you can put some wicking material in that. We'll talk about that a little more in a minute. Yep. Otherwise, that's it. You don't need much. This is a really simple build. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, because I'm doing this in the basin and I don't want to make a huge mess, is I'm going to carefully drill a whole series of holes on this guy over top of the other bucket and capture all the waste. And this doesn't take long. Um, you don't really have to go into any specific pattern or anything, but you just want to have enough holes, make them random. I'll show you when it's done here. Um, so I'm just going to go on mute and uh, throw it over to Tim for a minute. Yeah. So while, while he's drilling that, uh, like for those of you who are familiar with SIPs, I think the brilliance in this design, despite the fact that it's DIY, uh, I actually think it's a lot better than an earth box. And I'll tell you why. The separating action of those two uh, buckets. So the fact that you can quickly and easily pull out the medium, the soil medium, and access the water reservoir without having to pull out, pull apart, pull apart your soil, I think is brilliant. Because uh, both the earth box and the patio pickers, if you want to access that lower water reservoir, you literally have to pull up the whole bed in order to get under there. Uh, whereas this, you're just sliding a bucket out. It's 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 really brilliant. So uh, 
as you can see, he's putting a fair amount of drainage holes there, which is what I would recommend as well. Uh, ensuring that any uh, uh, soil that is stuck to the plastic there isn't going uh, anaerobic. It's, it's, it's really getting a, a good amount of air uh, uh, access. Yeah, and exactly. Overflow. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's it. I mean, it's you don't need really? a thousand holes, right? Just no, that that's, be more that's, than that's perfect. But 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 a fair amount. I mean, you you want you yeah. want to ensure you have a, a, a good drainage there. Yeah. Uh, for instance, I, if you're running these I, things outside and it <laughs> rains, you want you want to be able to, to have it drain freely. Um, and you could look at putting spigots on the bottom of these as well. You know, that's actually a really good idea because if you wanted to, you could probably do a. Uh, vermicompost in one of these and get Bingo. a little warm tea out of there Bingo. So, exactly now, one other thing i want to point out here um these are white buckets white is not ideal because i am concerned i might get a little bit of algae growth at the bottom but because this pulls apart it doesn't matter i can clean them out it's it's, it's easy in that regard um but if you can if you can get dark buckets black buckets that's better um these were just low cost they're food safe they're nearby and um because i'm not doing a bokashian or something like this i wanted to make sure i went with the food safe is just in case mm -hmm. so i've gone through and i've drilled all the holes now i'm just going to pick a spot here that's not too um close to the middle a little bit more out to the side and i'm going to drill the hole for the uh pvc pipe the tricky part is getting this thing back out there we go so so that's all i have to do for drilling that was the easy part. Um, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna pretend that looked real safe. It was very, very safe, safe sir. Yeah, the entire time. Um, hold on, that was totally, totally didn't think he was gonna injure himself there, folks. We are professionals. <laughs> now this is the part where you do actually have to be um, pretty careful because you are using the knife. I'm yep. just gonna drop the camera down a little bit because I want. Uh, this bit down on the ground. I don't want this moving around as I'm cutting it. Yes. So what's nice about these buckets that I bought is you can see this ring here on the bottom. And most five-gallon buckets have some sort of similar design. This is uh, the hole where they would actually inject the um, plastic for the blow molding or whatever the hell it's called. Um, but this actually is almost exactly the perfect size as the cup. So if it isn't, you can take and trace the thing and just cut a little bit on the inside. Now, what I'm going to do here to make this super simple and safe is I'm only putting out a little bit of blade, okay? Um, mm -hmm. You can get different types of knives, ones with better locks. This one's pretty decent. I've had it forever. I'm only going to go through it, but I'm going to go gently through, and I'm just going to work my way around the circle and cut this thing out. So this presses really nicely into the plastic. I'm not slicing, okay? When you're slicing, that's when you're going to stab yourself. When you got a knife like this, you don't want to stab yourself. Oh, I um, see what you're doing. Yeah. Side note, when I was uh, <laughs> developing my garage here, drywalling it, I should say, I damn near sliced half my thumb off with a knife just like this. So knife safety, folks, it's important. Yeah, oh, extremely, extremely. I was, uh, needless to say, very concerned when you told me that you used a knife for this process. But now, <laughs> that, now that I see how you're using the knife, yeah, I, I understand how it's not it's not very dangerous. Yeah, exactly. And like, what, how long have I been doing uh, and, this? For? And kids don't do this at home. I mean, we've been building for about seven or eight minutes here. This is for people who uh, who who pay for their own medical care. <laughs> there you go. Or live in Canada. So, mm -hmm. Ooh, actually, I shouldn't. Go so Canadian children. Feel insurance. free. Yeah. <laughs> so. You go through here and work this around. Um, again, just total cost. I think we're about 10 bucks for the build. Um, that's including the cost of, you know, buying a length of PVC, PVC pipe and doing it over several buckets. But you know, about 18 inches of PVC, like 12 foot piece will give you what? Six pieces, something like that? Yep. Eight pieces. Yeah. I can math. Definitely. Um... So this is looking this is looking pretty sharp, man. Yeah, easy to do. Um, if you can get buckets for cheap, it makes it even cheaper too. So, buy it in bulk. Yeah, I can't tell where you might have bought those buckets. These are sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Text in the mail, buddy. Unfortunately, you can only be redeemed for Canadian dollars. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, yeah. it's like twenty dollars in Canadian entire money. And like that, we're done. So there you go. Beautiful. Yep. And I just take and put that in there. And Stick the that there. Shove the other thing in there. And then you're good to go. Rip her out. Ship bucket complete. Get it done. What? We did it. We did our under 10 minutes for $10. Yeah, no problem at all. Love it, man. Love it. Those yeah. are brilliant. So, and just side note, um, I'm just kind of point out. So, I mean, you can see I've got so much space in there. I'm going to probably put, I'm hoping eight to 10 in there and be growing all sorts of crazy stuff over the fall. So, oh uh, Lots who says you can't grow indoors, right? Well done, sir. Well done. Yeah, man. So, any questions from uh, the guys here? Figure out some type of float system so you can see how much water is in the buckets. Yeah, absolutely, Rubix. Um, I was thinking of something along those lines, but because these buckets are white, I can just look at them. But any other dark bucket, yeah, like <laughs> yeah, uh, some uh, little point. piece of plastic with a with a bubble on it, kind of thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Engineering, man. I don't know. Engineering. Float system, float system. Oh, so, uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Of course, your nearest adult to do it for you. That's right, sir. And with that, I'm going to drink some apple juice. Frosty apple juice. And deliciously frosty apple juice. And I'm totally happy I didn't cut my thumb off there. That would have been oh, entertaining to some, but not... It would have been the best episode we've ever done, but also awful. <laughs> yeah. Matt and Tim go to the hospital. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right. So vermicomposting is one type of composting and you were going to talk about different types as we get into the fall here and people have all that garden ways to deal yeah yeah so uh basically I, I just wanted to kind of give a quick rundown of some of the things that you know as you're tidying up the garden as you're tearing down you're going to have a lot of plant material to play with um and i figured i'd kind of give a friendly reminder and rundown of, of the various ways you can use that material to your garden's benefit uh so yeah i have a little a little slideshow here to go through with you folks if matt can get if it i can better. ever get on the thing quick so i'm just I'm quickly reorienting a couple of pictures because yes. yeah yes so, yes all right um and if you haven't stuck green rush in your garden well why That's yeah nice. uh try it out guys honestly uh i'm liking it fantastic stuff fantastic. i've been running it now for a couple of months um impressed so, and we're going to definitely be putting it in these garden holes that I just made. So, uh, like in rush. It and works, it works in sub irrigated planters, confirmed. Yes. I, I could be so. Let's start out with the very first thing that I would suggest. And it's, it's probably the easiest for somebody like me who is in an apartment, and that's Bokashi style compost. Absolutely. So Bokashi, if you're not familiar with it, is is essentially uh, an inoculated bran that you're adding to uh, decomposing plant matter. And above and beyond plant matter, the beautiful thing about Bokashi is it gets rid of everything. So fats, bones, uh, all the stuff your mom told you not to put in compost, you can put in a Bokashi bucket and it'll destroy it. Uh, nope. So it's it's labs. Essentially, you're looking at uh, lactobacillus uh, bacterial uh, spores uh, breaking down things anaerobically. So that's without air. And that's the important part of this. You'll see he's doing this. And I borrowed this picture. Thank you, uh, Matt, uh, yep. from from your Bokashi bucket. Uh, but yeah, on to the next yeah, actually, just one point real quick. Um, you get to see there's a lot of pumpkin material in there and whatnot. Um, I've actually been taking the liquid out of this and feeding it back to the pumpkin. And that's part of the reason why it's so big. Bokashi. Cannibalism. Plants Bokashi. cannibalism. Speaking of so Bokashi. this this is a filled up, fully bloomed bucket of Bokashi here. And I just wanted to show you kind of the beginning and what the end should start looking like. You're going to see a, a white mycelium growth making its way throughout all of the organic matter that you have in that Bokashi. And although you see it in a giant 55 gallon drum here, you can do it in something as small as a Tupperware container 
uh, in, in, under your kitchen sink. So yeah. uh, very, very easy to use. And of course, with Bokash, you want to keep the oxygen out. Um, yep. The mistake with this one was I, I actually did a whole bunch of grass in here. And uh, you can't really see here, but the rest of the bucket wasn't breaking down as nicely because of so much grass. It would have over time. But um, you, you want to use green, leafy stuff and vegetables, stuff that compacts. Don't use a ton of grass if you are really space it out. So chop and drop, another photo from Matt's garden. Uh, this is a really popular technique. It's been around for as long as I know. And that's essentially the basis of it is you're chopping down the existing plant material that's left in the bed and you're letting it lay where it is. Uh, you, it, it, the best way to do it is to then cover it with some type of mulch. Matt's doubled down here. He's actually covered it with compost. And then next photo, mulch. So he's yep. done it with straw here. You can do it with any type of mulch, even leaf litter from around your yard, which uh, hopefully that's going to be the next one up. Oh, nice. Yeah, good timing yeah, right on. Right. So right. uh, leaf mold. Leaf mold is one of the coolest free inputs that you can use in your garden. Uh, almost anybody that has a yard gets leaf litter. You can accumulate that leaf litter and use it as a powerhouse in your garden. Um, making it yourself, it takes a long time. It's a long process, but it results in some of the best nutrients you can use uh, and, and soil conditioners you can use because it really helps with water retention. Uh, you're fungally inoculating the soil and it's basically just a bunch of leaves. Put it in a bag, make sure you poke a bunch of holes in it uh, and it'll break down over the course of the next 12 to 24 months and become a rich, dark, humus-like material uh, that has everything that your plant craves. Beautifully moist. So this is just some examples here of, of, of the mycelium grow growth that you should expect on, on a good leaf mold. Always indicative of a healthy system. Oh, 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 sorry. Okay, no, jump cool. the gun there. That's sure. no, We've got some good. upside down mushrooms here. So, oh, yes, yeah, upside down. All right. So uh, I, I just want to first off say thank you to our community because I did I did, I did, uh, take some pictures from our Discord community uh, to share some of the various styles that are available. So uh, this is our man, Big Stress, uh, and uh, he's, he's got a traditional compost heap. So that is an aerobic process. Unlike Bokashi, that's anaerobic, so lack of air. This is aerobic, so it needs air. And you go in there and you turn it regularly and, and it heats up and there's there's a lot of uh, microbial activity going on. There's fungal activity going on uh, and there's insects in there as well. So you're going to get the benefits of every process. It's basically any type of native organism that you want to harness in this type of bed, you can exploit them. Uh, so just to show you, if you can go next slide, Matt. I can. There you go. Yeah, so this is good. So he's he's got actually got a temperature gauge in there to check the temperature, make things are make sure things are cooking off. But I want you to notice is that wire that's wrapping it around it, as opposed to the the big plastic bucket that Matt had the Bokashi in uh, to keep air out. This has a wire cage to keep air uh, having access, right? Yeah. Pallets are another popular technique. I've seen systems built where guys do sections of pallets and have two or three different piles. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And honestly, if, if you're not adding compost to your garden, um, you're missing out on one of the best amendments. Yeah. One of the other best. Amendments. And this goes on to the very best compost. This is really yes. kind of the cream of the crop and that's vermicompost. Uh, so again, this is a, a bed of, of big smokes, just showing how many, uh, how many worms he uh, had in there or big stress rather, uh, <laughs> showing how many worms <laughs> he had in his garden. Uh, next, next one over, uh, this is our man, Johnny Titan, who is quickly becoming a worm expert. Um, and he's got, so he, he was showing off here. This is a double style bin. So you got a bunch of holes in there and then you have multiple levels of bins and you're basically, uh, switching them out because the lower bin is going to fill up with uh, liquid or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Casting? Uh, oh, no. oh, leachate. Leachate. Thank you very much. Yes. So the bottom part is going to fill up with like a, a liquid called leachate. 
and uh, you can use that straight up as an addition to your plants, then you're going to have another bucket that's going to fill up with castings. And then you're going to have another bucket that you're basically feeding the worms into. Um, so brilliant setup. DIY uh, and resulting in a heck of a lot of worms breeding for him from, from the sounds of it. Yeah. Um, I run a worm tower. So a very similar system. I bought it because I'm cheap um, or cheap because I'm lazy. I was lazy this time, not cheap. <laughs> so, and it's effectively that it's just a box. It's a sits its tower and uh, you've got progressive trays and it holds yep. it's four trays. Um, I could have taken a picture for tonight, but apparently I wasn't prepared. So <laughs> But yeah, full, full composting. Don't waste next, that stuff, next, man. Next one. Is there a next one? Oh. That's that's all. That was it. Oh, did yeah. we skip one? I don't think Go so. Go back. There but should be three. Is... No, I mean, did I? Maybe I made a mistake. Hmm. So we don't have the third picture. I think. I okay. All right. Well, the other, the other one was basically <laughs> showing the side-by-side -side technique. So instead of stacking uh, it, you can basically uh, uh, switch which side you're feeding back and forth so that it's allowing the worms a chance to have a place to live and poop and a, a place to eat. Hold on, essentially. I'm clicking just to see if I made a mistake. If it's sitting on the drive here, just, just bear with me a minute, folks. It's been a long day. We're tired today. You know, a lot of stuff That's going okay. on in the garden and whatnot. That's all right. Yeah, it was cutting with there. knives and stuff. Very focused. It was stressful, stressful times. So, mm -hmm. Oh, indeed. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened here. Okay, we do not have that picture, unfortunately. Good. Uh, excellent. So uh, that said... <laughs> uh any questions from folks I, those are the things that i think uh are, are what you should be doing with your garden leftovers don't plop them into the garbage uh no. if if you want to give them to the city composting fine enough it'll it'll end up in a, in a decent compost eventually hopefully uh but uh it, what i really recommend is doing it yourself taking advantage of the nutrients that you grew and breaking it back down into nutrients, right? For, for your plants for next year. Um, absolutely. And there's nothing better than feeding your plants themselves because they really do thrive on that. Yeah, absolutely. It's got a perfect nutrient balance for that plant, right? Yeah. Um, and just touching on the final point of the night, uh, rhino jousting, we, we had everything planned. It was set up. It fell apart it, at the last minute. It wasn't us. It was the rhinos. They, they, it was they, the rhino. It was the rhinos. I had a deposit in. diarrhea. If you've ever seen a rhinoceros uh, with diarrhea, diarrhea, you would understand just, why we can't joust with them. Uh, 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 we didn't think it out. We're we're going to come up with something equally exciting for next. Better week. next week. Better next week. It'll be better next time. Yeah, we'll make it up to you guys. And I think with that, um, that's a wrap. Thank you for joining us, Living Soil yeah, Society. Yeah. It's not an exclusive membership. Yeah. But uniforms are required. We should probably get uniforms. Some, yeah. We're not wearing yeah. uniforms today. No. Well, well we kind of are. 